from a point of light high in the atmosphere of the earth above this place we see a great star fire energy field that is building it is a fire enfolding itself and it is coalescing cosmic virtue that we can access whenever we choose to live our lives virtuously, gloriously, reverently, and holily. As we meditate upon our I am God presence, the real us, the true self that has always been and always will be, the individuality that God created us within that perfect likeness and image of the Divine One, we have recourse to everything that we require. The all wisdom of God, the all truth of the Almighty, the all love of the Holy Spirit, and the all power of Brahma. This I am God presence that we revere and that we assent to as our true inner leader and the guide and the pole star of our own being is here for us to know, to invoke, to commune with, and to merge with. Our real self has always been aware of us, individuated and evolving and involving itself in time and space in the material cosmos or the time-space continuum, even as it abides in eternality beyond this dimension of being. And when we ascend to it, when we foreclose on the lesser self and open our hearts fully to this God reality, the magic, the miracle, and the mystery begins in our life. And we are so blessed, even as we are blessed by our I am God presence. It is our great beloved that we yearn for, we strive to know and to fully become, to surrender to again and again so that we can truly live our life as godly men and women. Because we have chosen the God path of light, our I am presence shines bright above us and eventually within us in this alchemy of spirit, in this divine sensation that comes that impels us ever higher into oneness and true love. Because God is within us, the kingdom of God is within us, and the answer to every problem, issue, or dilemma is within us, we simply surrender to the process of going within deeper and deeper to ascertain more of this reality and to feel ever more deeply this connection and retain and maintain that connection by our conscious choice to live in presence. When we choose God over the world, when we choose light over darkness and God goodness over evil, our I am presence shines brightly in our midst because by that choice and by that an intention, the alchemy of the energy field that supports and protects and seals us manifests. 
and that alchemy is maintained through love and through attention and the volition of our will to live within it. We now enter the causative state of being an initiate where we are co-creators with God of all the virtues that we are privileged to bring forth reverently, holily, lovingly. As co-creators, we let go of our non-co-creative lesser self as we did in this prayer. I let go of my old nature and we fully embrace our new nature, which is really as old as the hills, yet which we had temporarily let go of or not fully remembered or embraced fully in our life. The old nature we realize has been a chimera, a shadow, a fleeting thing that really has no true reality. Yet our I am God presence has always been the permanent star, the iconic divine matrix of our intimate, real self. As we love God with our entire heart, mind, strength, and soul and the command of Jesus and the Gospels, the I am presence takes hold of us. It's almost a divine magnetic attraction that occurs where we are impelled to be in that state of oneness. We are magnetically drawn into this vivacity and this intensity of spirit. And it impels us forward on our path of light with joy, with cosmic expectation. And we no longer deny who we are as God, men, and women. We accept it. We revere that in humility, yet with clarity of consciousness. For when we breach the realms of matter to no spirit, there God is, there our reality exists, there our true nature abides. And in that, we can reclaim who we are in God as co-creators. God expects much of us even as we expect God to answer our prayers and our inner God desires. What does God expect of us? Simply that we adhere to cosmic law and understand our nature and then engage in co-creativity with the creator of all, the source of life and light. God gives us free will to experience all the dynamics of our involution and evolution. And so we have come to that point where our victory is nigh at the why. Remember that when you're at the why, your victory is nigh as you choose the upward path of light and the higher walk with spirit. Many of us are at a number of whys on our path as we get wiser. <laughs> a number of whys on the path as we get wiser. Yet there's always a test of our wisdom. Have we proven that we truly know the truth by adhering to what is real, what is based on cosmic law, divine jurisprudence, and what impels us to reach beyond mortality. So to ascend, we have to get the victory at each point or each why. And to be victorious, we become wiser and wiser as we master the whys of our life. 
Our past lives come into view often when we have surrendered our past to God and the eternal now. Only in the eternal now will you discern the mysteries of past lifetimes to know why you went through what you did and how it applies to where you are now on your path of the ascension and of oneness. If you seek to know the past without being in the now, it's a dead end because if you focus too much on the past, you're not letting go of your old self, right? You're recreating things. So when people ask, who was I before the cosmos echoes back to you, who are you now, my son, my daughter? Live in that now state, and all shall be revealed as required. The I Am Presence is the star of your being, the solar self of your true nature. Everything that you ever could dream of or require or need from any state or level of being or consciousness exists within your I Am Presence. It has the answer to everything. It responds to the littlest impulses that you may have as you move through life and require anything on your path. Yet you have to be quickened and awakened to discern its answers through stillness, through deep hearing of what God has to share with you. Do you think that God would not offer you his, her wisdom along the way? Of course God does as a loving father mother. Yet you have to be still enough to listen and hear what God is telling you within your conscience, within your Christ self, the mediator between your individuality and matter and your divine selfhood and spirit. And the Christ is the great discerner and medium or mediator through which you can hear from both sides of the equation and understand the communique. So when you rely on your Christ self, then the mediator is present within your awareness and discernment is easy. And through dedication, you simply know the truth as you require knowing anything. It's not so mysterious when you break it down into little pieces of understanding. It's really a very simple dynamic to know the elements of the path that are required for you to gain self-mastery and to become truly who you are. The little inconsistencies on our path is what we must overcome and master. The little things that still irk us or create little divisive energies in our auric field or in our consciousness. What are these? You can assess what they are each day. Are you a little bit out of alignment because your diet is not what it should be, or you have been diverted in your consciousness to dwell on something that really has no lasting import for you in the moment or for eternity, where have you diverted from your focus on God and the I Am Presence? That is what you must assess when you feel ill you feel less than, you feel out of sorts. Where have I diverted myself 
from attending to the things of the Spirit and being one with my God presence. And when you find the answer through deep introspection, resolve then to be on spec all the time, to be in alignment with the God presence that so loves you, adores you. We adore God. Did you know that God adores you? God dotes upon you. God loves you with an infinite love. God loves you with an infinite love. Can you get that through your brain and your mind? God loves you with an infinite love that is boundless, universal, cosmic, unending, will never stop, even if you temporarily lapse into states where you don't appreciate or love God fully, God is still loving you as the sun shines upon the just and the unjust. God still loves you. How could God do anything other than to love you? If God stopped loving you perfectly, the cosmos would be in error. And that cannot happen because God is pure light and pure love. So if God unerringly loves you, play with God and respond to that love and find ways to engage in loving God in childlike wonder and creative acts and expressions that build the relationship and sustain the dynamic of how that love can continue to grow under Holy Spirit inspiration. When you commit to loving God with your whole being, as we've been saying in this prayer every day now, that love should continue to grow and expand and bring you closer and closer to the dynamics of oneness, where the impelling power of the Holy Spirit moves you hourly, even minute by minute, into that afflatus of light that is so beautiful and holy and pure that that's what you yearn for. You're not concerned about making someone else love you to feel whole. God already loves you. You are whole. Do you realize it? Have you committed to that wholeness, body, mind, and soul? The love of God is the answer to every problem on earth. The love of God. That means our love of God and God's love bestowed upon us to heal all, to bring all into balance and harmony. The love of God is the answer to every problem on earth. And I see that from both, from above and from below. The love of God soaring to God from within us and soaring to us from within God. The love of God is the answer to every problem on earth. Do you get it? Do you understand what was just said? The love of God is the answer to every problem on earth. Politics won't resolve all issues. Laws will not answer everything. Righteous men and women who, by God's grace, are in alignment with the love of God, who do righteous works as true leaders, will help to bring and restore balance. Yet the love of God is the answer to every problem on earth. And seeing this from above and below is the alchemy of the magic of this statement, these sacred words. They should be etched in fire within your heart, your mind, your will, and your soul. The love of God is the answer to every problem upon earth. When you understand this, then you will reach deeper into the God presence within you to find that 
reply that answer and to initiate spirals of light to put it into practice and into play. Let us say it together. The love of God is the answer to every problem upon earth. The love of God is the answer to every problem upon earth. The love of God is the answer to every problem upon earth. This statement rings throughout the cosmos and it touches every man, woman, and child today in their divine selfhood to remind them of what is required to meet the needs, the requirements of today. It will help resolve conflict. It will help to bring more compassion and kindness into play in situations where people have been at each other's throats or at war energetically. It will sustain a state of grace that itself through the Holy Spirit will mitigate, mollify, and transmute the dialectics of division and darkness. When we rely on these words and we pray with full God intention to help in this time of crisis to resolve dualism into unity as we heard in the daily reading today, we become saints of the Most High answering the calls of humanity. Did you know that in your higher self, you can actually invoke light to answer the calls, the prayers of other human beings? You can be a resource and a solution to what is transpiring that is ignoble, dark, of the energy veil. Every time you are living in your I am God presence, fully clothed with light, the universe and angels of the sacred fire can use your light energy to answer prayers and bring miracles into play in the world. And the pool, the resource, the collective of our causal bodies, the angels actually tap into to answer prayers of people of all religions or all persuasions. Because the I am presence of each one of us is one with God and therefore is a part of the one essence of the divine one. Because in heaven all are one, even with their unique individuality, their divine undivided self, each ascended being, being one with God, is a part of the whole, just as we have different organs and systems and cells within our body that are part of our body. They're not separate from our body. They're part of our own body. It's the same with heaven. Every ascended master is like a cell in the body of God. Every saint, every angel, every cosmic being. And you are still that even while embodied in form within your God presence. So when you tap into God through your I am presence, through that oneness, miracles can manifest. The flow of light can be sustained. The grace of God can be endeared again and again to many as a blessing and as a healing unguent. So our work is really all about sustaining the divine individuality of our God presence in light 24-7 and maintaining that beautiful, reverent, holy state of being. We can have fun, we can enjoy life, yet our inner consciousness wed to spirit is sustaining this grace and abiding within this field of perfection. Remember that. Even as you're doing the littlest of things, juicing your celery in the morning, making your wonderful blueberry banana shake, 
that you love so much, especially if you're Mona, that it just, you have to have that every day. It's part of your life. Those little perfect blueberries just pop out within you and bring to yourselves all the joy of their being as they were in the sunlight in the wintertime or in the summer or whenever and just enjoying life and coalescing cosmic energy from the sun into those little blueberries with their antioxidants and their little joy bodies. Those little blueberries, joy bodies, so powerful. The detox smoothie. If you're not taking your detox smoothie every day, then when you get sick, there's no one else to blame but yourself. Take your detox smoothie every day. Every day. Don't let a day go by without it. That's Lanello speaking right now unto every heart friend. And if you continue to eat eggs, if you continue to eat gluten, if you continue to eat sugar and dairy products, then when you get sick, get on your knees and tell God, I'm sorry, I sinned. I knew the law. I've heard it from David. I've heard it from the masters. I've heard it from Anthony William, but I'm ignoring it. And I'm disobedient, and I accept that disobedience. But today, I am changing. Today, I am going to change my life, and I am going to live virtuously in my body, and I'm going to transform this body by God's grace because I choose to live in my I am presence. Did you feel the heat and the fire of that statement? If so, good, because some of you deserve to be chastised a little bit because you've been sick. And your choices are not great choices. You know the truth. How long have we had Anthony William speaking to us? Since what? At least five years. But you've ignored him. He's a messenger of health and well-beingness. Hilarion endorsed him over five years, six years ago. But you're ignoring him. Why? And then you get sick and you wonder why you're sick. So this is a little Melchizedekian chastisement to some. And you better listen and you better get rid of those eggs and that dairy and the excess gluten and the sugar and change your diet and then be a true initiate. If you are not following the diet of the initiates, don't expect to be an initiate and to access the highest God powers that arise from and within your I am presence to impel you higher. Don't expect it. Compromise all you desire and live in a lower light field. But if you truly desire the greatest light energies, the alchemical cosmic powers of God that the Essenes had because of their disciplined life and diet, then abide by that diet, live in that regime, and be emboldened by it and be true to it and be true to yourself. Now, every once in a while, when you travel or when situations arise, you may compromise a little bit, but you go back to that. You live in that. You understand the dynamics of it. Why do we have this diet regime? So that we can anchor the most light in our body temples and be empowered by the Holy Spirit to be true God healers and inspirers of mankind. Don't expect to be a great healer if you yourself can't discipline yourself. If you choose to discipline yourself, then open yourself up to the all light of the Almighty and watch the handiwork of the Lord move through your body temple and coalesce miracles in this dimension. I know that I've compromised. I've said to myself over and over, if I just maintain the diet and the disciplines that I know that I should, I can release so much more light. I can do it. And yet I've even compromised over and over. So this is as much for me as any of you. I know it. You know it. When, oh God, will we sustain as initiates the disciplines of the Spirit to live as a true Essene community of light. 
When will we? It's based on every person's decision. So as a community, we will magnetize more light bearers, light workers, light sharers. When each one of us takes accountability, each one of us self-disciplines our life and doesn't say, well, nobody will notice. Yes, we all notice in our higher presence when one person here or there compromises on the path, wastes time, does this or that which is not optimal for them and for our sacred community because we're all tied at the hip. We're all hitched at the heart. We are all one. So what one does impacts the whole body, right? What each one of us does impacts every one of us. Make your choices the best. Live in the integrity of who you are. Let go of your old nature. Decide today. We just said these sacred words. I let go of my old nature. Assess what that old nature is. Old artifacts of your lesser self, of who you used to be, who you were, before you learned the truth. These are hard words for some to hear, and you may rail against me or Lanello or the masters who are overshining me today. I don't care. I, as a messenger, have to speak what comes to me by God's grace through the Holy Spirit. It's up to you whether you will abide by that. And sometimes we get spanked a little bit because we've gotten out of alignment, and I have myself. So I think we should end on a positive, loving note <laughs> with a joyous song. Thank you, Lanello. Thank you, God, for this message of love today. <laughs> 